Um, so welcome. Um, nice to see you guys. This is actually a very short training. It's a very short presentation um, about a new document that we are going to start collecting at registration. Now, this document is um, for Medicare patients. The name of the document is Medicare Provider Base Notice. So we're gonna go through a few slides here just so you guys know what the document is and the, uh, the process behind it so that if you happen to get those patients at registration, you know what the expectations are, okay? Um, so before we get started, how many of you guys have heard the, uh, the statement or the label that uh, Moffitt technically is considered a specialty hospital? Have you guys ever heard of that before? I'm sure you have, you just don't pay attention. Um, so. <laughs> um, so it is, and a lot of people seem to think it's because we have um, a focus on uh, cancer, and you know, that makes sense. It's a specialty kind of, kind of treatment. But the, um, the bigger reason for that is because of the way that we are designed, so the way that we kind of like operate and do things behind the scenes as far as like billing and that, that kind of thing. So the correct term for those kinds of facilities like, like we are is uh, provider-based facilities. That's the, the correct designation. So what that means is that we provide outpatient services in a hospital setting. So if you think about it this way, Moffitt is a hospital with an inpatient side, where patients come in, they get admitted, they stay overnight, they get discharged, you know, that, that whole process. But within that hospital setting, we also have outpatient departments, which are all the clinics that, you know, we all work in, so like GI, hematology, um, endocrine, head and neck, and we offer outpatient services there, um, similar to how private practices outside of Moffitt operate, where patients um, go in, they see the, their provider um, for consultations and, and that kind of thing. So that's really the, the specialty behind the, the statement. And again, the correct term is provider base. Now, these facilities um, tend to offer patients a higher quality of care, and we will actually talk about that in a second, just so you guys um, know what I mean by higher quality of care, so just keep that, keep that in mind. But what I want you guys to know as we move forward is that this designation that we have, this label of us being a specialty hospital, of being a provider-based hospital, allows us to bill Medicare for higher rates, if that makes sense. So that means that, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm a Medicare patient, meaning I have insurance through Medicare and I choose to come to uh, Moffitt Cancer Center for any kind of services, blood work, radiology, consultations, radiation, you know, you name it, I'm gonna end up paying more being here than if I were to go somewhere else, somewhere locally around the community. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, patients, whenever they come here or to any kind of specialty facility, provider-based facility, they actually get um, a few different charges for every uh, visit that they complete. <clears throat> One of those charges is a facility fee, and that is based off of the clinic or department that they get scheduled in. So like, for example, if the patient goes to hematology, uh, hematology has a specific facility charge for that clinic, specific. Now if they were to go to GI, GI has its own facility charge, and it could be higher, it could be lower, it all depends on what the clinics do with the patients when they're there. Some clinics do uh, different procedures in the rooms, like uh, for example, cutaneous, they do uh, mole removals in, in the clinic, they do biopsies, um, GU does procedures in the clinic as well, like cystoscopies and you know that, all those different kinds of uh, procedures would determine how much that fee would be. And then on top of that, they also get a provider fee um, that is based off of the provider that they got scheduled with. And you can think of it this way as, let's say for example, the patient comes in and sees a plastic surgeon. Uh, well, plastic surgeons typically charge a lot more than like a regular surgeon or a medical oncologist or uh, an APP. So again, that would depend on which doctor saw, saw the patient. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to show you a visual. So I'm going to show you 
a Medicare patient and what the charge breakdown would look like for that patient to go to one of those provider-based facilities like Moffitt Cancer Center. And then I'm gonna show you the same exact patient and what the charges uh, would look like for that patient to go somewhere uh, locally, not one of those specialty facilities, just so you can kind of see the difference uh, between the two scenarios. So this is that Medicare patient in one of those specialty facilities, like I mentioned. Here you can see this would be the facility fee, the facility charge that's associated to whatever clinic they went to, right? This would be the provider charge that's associated to whatever provider they saw in that clinic. And then on top of that, they may have a copay because maybe they don't have a secondary policy or any kind of supplemental insurance policy. So their total for that visit would end up being somewhere around $143. All right? Now, that same patient going somewhere locally, not one of those provider-based facilities, for the same exact service, this is how, how much they would end up paying. So you guys can see the difference. Right? It's actually <coughs> almost 50% between the two different scenarios. So you may be looking at those numbers and you may be asking yourself, you may be questioning, well, if patients know that and they know that they're being charged more when they come to Moffitt Cancer Center and they can get the same exact service somewhere else for cheaper, why do they come here? Why do they? Any ideas? Because we're a better facility. We have Okay, so they look at things like reputation, right, accreditation, the fact that we're like the only NCI designated hospital in the whole state of Florida, so that, that may play a factor in, in their decision making. Um, that's a good point. And then on top of that, <clears throat> those provider-based facilities like Moffitt Cancer Center, like Tampa General Hospital, like Florida Hospital, they have the ability to offer a lot of different benefits to patients that a lot of those local, smaller community facilities are not able to because of whatever technological advances they don't possess. So here at Moffitt, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the initiative we have that started last year with the whole patient first idea. There were a lot of improvements that were made with the patient's um, best interest in mind, right? Patients first, everything's about the patient. So we wanna make their day-to-day -day as easy as possible. So there's a lot of technologies that we have in place to make that happen. One of those technologies would be the patient portal. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a portal account or been exposed to a portal account. Um, it's a really good feature and all of our patients have access to it. All they have to do is just register for the service. Um, but through the portal, what it, ha what, what it does is it allows them to communicate with their doctors um, through messages. You know, they can send uh, a question or concern to their nurse or their doctor and they can respond, you know, communicate back and forth. They can check um, lab results, they can check uh, medical records, they can request appointments so if they think they need blood work or radiology procedure or follow-up. They can do that all through the portal. So that kind of technology kind of makes it easier for the patient to have a uh, stronger relationship with their clinical team, as long as they you know, take advantage of it, right? Now, me personally, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really a phone person, per se. For me to pick up the phone and call someone, I really have to like think about it and think about it and think about it and then probably wait until the last minute to actually do it, even with family. It's just, I don't know what it is. I just don't like talking on the phone. So the fact that I could do all of that in a healthcare setting, take care of my healthcare issues, all electronically, for me that's a huge benefit. So if I were considering coming to Moffitt and paying more for being at Moffitt versus another facility that doesn't have that kind of benefit, for me, this would be a, a, a huge plus to make that, that decision. So you just kinda, you know, think about that. And then another benefit that these facilities offer patients that a lot of those smaller facilities are not able to is the ability to coordinate their care across multiple departments. So think about it this way. When our patients come to Moffitt Cancer Center, are they here just to see the doctor? What else are, are they here for? <coughs> Blood work, radiology services, some of them need infusion services, 
radiation, some of them need rehab, dietitians, social workers, right? We have all of that in one place. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop in a way. It's convenience, right? And typically you have to pay more for, for convenience, right? And then on top of that, I don't know if this has ever happened to any of you, but like for example, when I go see my local doctor, my PCP or one of my specialists, and let's say they need me to do something extra like blood work or uh, some sort of procedure, um, it's up to me as the patient to figure out A, where do I have to have the procedure done and then call that place to get it scheduled, right? Have you guys ever had to do that yourselves? Whereas here, the patients, all they do is just show up and whatever they need to have it scheduled, we do it all for them. We coordinate all of their care. So again, it just makes it easier on them. So that's another, another benefit, in my opinion. All right, so why am I telling you all of this? So why should you guys care that Medicare patients, when they come to Moffitt, end up paying more than if they were to go somewhere um, locally, somewhere in their community? Well, if you guys know anything about insurances, is that they have a lot of different regulations and a lot of different policies that we, as a hospital, have to abide by in order for them to pay for those patients' treatments. And Medicare, being that it is a government program, um, it's probably one of the insurances with the most regulations out there. Um, for example, that whole questionnaire that we all love so much that we have to ask at registration, right? <laughs> um, so what would happen? What would Medicare do to us if we don't ask those questions when we're supposed to ask them? Right, so they would probably start with a slap on the hand, right? Give us a fine for not following their policy. And then if it's bad enough, they could actually turn around and say that they're not gonna pay for any more Medicare patients to come to Moffitt Cancer Center. And that's a huge deal, right? Um, I wanna say at least 80%, if not more, of our patient population are Medicare patients. So we definitely don't want that to happen, right? Anyways, so last year, Medicare went live with a new policy, um, a new regulation that requires all of those provider-based hospitals like Moffitt Cancer Center, like TGAH, like Florida Hospital, to be upfront about the fact that we are more expensive than other facilities. So they are asking us to inform patients when they come to Moffitt Cancer Center that when they are here, they're gonna end up having a higher um, coinsurance liability than they would if they were to go somewhere locally. And honestly, that's fair, right? If I'm a Medicare patient, I would definitely wanna know that being here at Moffitt Cancer Center, I'm paying more for blood work than I were if I were to go to Quest. Because maybe I don't wanna come here, maybe I wanna go to Quest, right? And save some money. Don't you guys think that's fair? That's fair. So how are we gonna do it? <clears throat> Our compliance department here at Moffitt Cancer Center drafted up this letter that we're going to provide to patients at registration when they come you know, for that first initial visit. So this letter is you know, thanking the patient for choosing Moffitt for their care, and then it goes over to explain that we are required by Medicare to explain to them um, that we are a provider-based hospital, and because of that, they're, they'll have a higher coinsurance liability than they would if they were to go somewhere, you know, somewhere else. And then it gives them the different kinds of appointments that they could have um, while at Moffitt Cancer Center, and what the difference would be for each of those services in comparison to other um, places around the community. Now, these are just estimates, right? It could be more, it could be less, like I said at the very beginning, it's all based off of the clinic that they go to, and it's all based off of the provider that they see. So these numbers are just estimates. And then at the very end of the letter, it gives the patients the uh, contact information for the business office if they have any questions or they need any of their uh, concerns addressed. Our responsibility is just to provide them with the letter, and they just have to acknowledge it, and then we keep going um, business as usual. This is just for new patients though, right? <laughs> we'll talk about that. Okay. Actually, I believe that's, yeah, that's the next slide. So, <coughs> excuse me, right now, 
Remember how I said the policy went live last year? We have not been doing it. So we are 0% compliance right now. So that means that if Medicare were to come through our doors and look at our records, we would be in a huge amount of trouble. So we have to start somewhere. We have to show Medicare that we're listening, that we're paying attention, that we're gonna do what they're asking us to do. So that's where we're gonna start with all of the new patients going forward. Now, are we asking all the new patients to acknowledge the letter? What kind of patients? Just Medicare patients. So if a patient comes in and they have Blue Cross Blue Shield, do they need the letter? No, because why do they care that Medicare charges more? They don't have Medicare, right? It's just patients that have Medicare. Now, all the existing patients that have been coming here for a while for treatment, they also have to acknowledge this letter at some point or another. So we're gonna do it the same way that we've done those patients in the past, whenever we have something new going live. Whenever it's time for them to do um, one of those interviews, one of those 30-day updates where we go through the system and we verify you know, their address, their phone numbers, their employment, all of their doctors, at the end of that process, and honestly, it doesn't really matter if you guys do it at the end or at the beginning, it's up to you how you, you know, do your, your, your flow. But somewhere during that registration, just take a few seconds to look at that patient's record on the iPad and see whether or not, whether or not any of those forms are missing. And if they are missing, then you would collect them at that point. Because you guys know some of those forms expire, right? So we have to recollect them every once in a while. So when you're doing updates for patients, that's one of the requirements is to make sure you verify that the forms are all on file. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, so next, I am going to go ahead <laughs> and pretend that I'm registering a patient like you guys would in the clinic. So, you know, typically this would be on the iPad where you guys collect all the, all the forms. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna go ahead and search for a test patient here in the system. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick any of them. Hopefully I haven't used this one yet, okay. So here are all the forms that you have that are available to sign, right? Notice this one right here, how it says Medicare Review. This would be that new letter that you guys just saw. Now in production, when it goes live, it is not going to be called Medicare Review. The name of the form is Medicare Provider Based Notice, like I showed you at the very beginning. Now notice for this form, there's no color, right? It's blank. So typically, when you go into the iPad and a form is missing and it's required, what color do you typically see next to it? So why isn't this one red for this patient? Because they don't have Medicare. They don't have, to, they don't have to do anything with that form. So if this was a Medicare patient and that form was missing and it was required, you would see that red box next to it. So the system will alert you in those scenarios, but you still have to look at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pretend that it is a Medicare patient, and we are going to go ahead and add it. So once you click on the plus sign, it brings up the letter. <clears throat> so here's the header, attention Medicare beneficiaries, Thank you for choosing to receive your care today at one of Moffitt's outpatient centers. We are required by Medicare to inform you. You know, he goes over the stipulations. Here are those different rates. Here's the patient's information at the very bottom of the form. So once the patient reads it, once they go through it, all they have to do is just click submit. It's gonna save the letter. And once it does, it'll take you back to the home screen and you can see that, that it's done. And it's only a one-time thing. It doesn't expire, so you don't have to recollect it again. Once you do it, it's done. Do you have to say anything or do you just let them read it? Sorry? Do you just let them read it? That's a good question. So <clears throat> before I answer that, the final version of the form it's still being worked on. It's um, actually, we're working on the Spanish version of the form. So once that's final, it'll be live and ready for you guys to start collecting it. So as of right now, there's nothing that you need to do. I just wanted to 
me with you all before it went live so you knew what to expect, okay? Um, so probably by next week, I'll send out an email to all the clinics letting you know that the form is live and you can start um, collecting it at that point. When I send out that email, I'm going to include um, the script that you could use to present the form to the patient before you have them sign it, because obviously you guys know you have to explain what you're having them sign or complete at that point. Um, and then in addition to that script, I'm gonna have a few questions that have come up while you know training. So let's say, what happens if the patient doesn't wanna acknowledge the letter? What do we do in those cases? Um, what happens if the letter is down and we can collect it? Are we gonna have paper copies? So those kind of questions that have come up in training, I'll have them bulleted on the email. That way you can have that as a, as a reference. Sounds good? Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, well, that's pretty much all I had um, to show you, to share with you guys today. So as always, thank you guys for your, uh, for your time. And I uh, hope you have a good rest of your day and a uh, good productive week.